Yo guys, what's going on? It's your boy Joseph from uh, the Heretic Chronicles. And today, um, man, got a fire guest. It's been a long time in the making. We've been talking for a while. Brother, introduce yourself. Let everybody know who you are. I'm Jack McLean, Jack Leslie McLean, also known as the Athenian. <laughs> yes, Ancient sir. Greek. Uh, you're, you're definitely an interesting guest, man. And, you know, tell everybody, like, what country you're from, you know, where'd you grow up, stuff like that. So, yes, yeah, so I'm from um, England, uh, United Kingdom, England, from South London, Croydon. I grew up in Streatham and in the Coolsdon, uh, Croydon area. Um, that's my home. I live in Thornton Heath, which is Croydon. And, yeah, that's where I live. I'm 30 years old. And I'm fighting on the BKB, currently signed to the, signed to the BKB promotion. Bare Knuckle Boxing, the traditional, the best English Bare Knuckle Boxing promotion out there, by, by and large. Yeah, man, for sure. Mm. So growing up, like, what was your, like, martial arts background? Like, you know, what type of fighting style did you have, like, growing up or if you trained? So, yeah, so when I was younger, I was always into sport. I was very athletic. And I was always into the Jackie Chan. I love Jackie Chan. Okay. He was my favorite. And that inspired me to get into martial arts. I started to train in the jujitsu and in judo. And then um, what happened is I went to school. I um, used to go to a private school for a little while with my parents, but then they could no longer afford to send me, both me and my sister there, because obviously private school, you got to pay for it. And they wanted us to have a better life coming from a bit of a rough area. They wanted to put us in a good school, you know, to get mm. good education and things, but they couldn't really afford it. So we had to go to a public school again and go through my teenage years in a public school. It was very rough. Uh, we moved to an area where there's a lot of white people, gypsy people, and, uh, you know, they're very rough boxers, the gypsies. And I used to get a lot of fights. So I used to always lose. And I thought this jujitsu stuff not working. So... I started so to since you're talking about your upbringing, my next question was going to be, how were you in school? And it kind of sounds like right now you're talking okay, about your, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So how that was leads, that? That leads to how I got into the martial arts, really, because like I said, in school, um, you know, we'd have a lot of fights uh, and uh, yeah, there would be a lot of fights. It was like a, a bare knuckle. It was like BKB. Almost mm. like, uh, you know, would be called out. Why Jack and coming in a science lesson? I remember one of my we're friends now. This boy Terry Hall, and he was out of a very good boxer, you know. But I slide tackled him in the back and knocked him down in a football game. He'd come round and say, "Jack, I mean you, back gate three thirty. And I'd have sort of anxiety all day. I've got to go fight this guy who's a lot bigger than me, a lot better boxer than me, and he would beat me anyway. Um, those fights there in that school got me into the boxing you know I decided to take up kicks boxing in college and that's how I how I got into um into the boxing but I had a good upbringing like not uh, my bad my parents very good peer parents um you know just normal middle class family really and like I said they did want us to have a good education so I went to a private school for a couple of years but I could only do it for a couple of years, really, where I learned a lot of education. And then, like I said, when I went to the, nothing wrong with public school, it was still a very good school, um, but it was a bit more rougher, you know, you had the more rougher chaps down there. Okay, with like okay. Boxing and all of this. So that's how I got into the boxing, really, when I was quite young. Slide tackle them in the back and then they, they'd, you'd have to fight then. If you did a foul, that was considered a very bad illegal foul you'd be offered to fight. And I remember, I think the next day I came into school and the fight was arranged and I had to fight him down at this alleyway. And I remember I, I had no idea how to fight. I, so I went, I walked forward and he was stood there ready. And I walked forward and I punched him. And then he just grabbed me and punched me. And he was punching me loads and loads. I just had my head down like this, taking loads of bangs to the face. He oh, broke man. the door. Uh, then the, and then the fight was over. But then I remember the fights would escalate. So what would happen is you, uh, one guy would fight one, and I would be beaten. What would happen then? Another guy would come. Like I would be beaten by Terry Hall. Then my friend Max Hanna, he was a really strong lad. He then came and beat Terry Hall up in the in the middle of the corridor. 
boxed him, broke it, broke his eye. Then the uh, teachers all sort of stopped him. Then, then his friend Martin Butcher, who's the big stronger one, who beat me, he came and beat Max. And then uh, this guy, his name was uh, Sam Pedler, came and um, jumped in and wanted to fight Max. And there was this big, big fight. And then my mate, the big hardest man of all, Yannick Foe, his name was this big black boy. He was my best, one of my best friends as well. And he, he came in and he jumped in. And then there was a big, almost a fight between Sam Pedler and Yannick Foe, they were the two hardest sort of blokes. And then they, they were like that. They went to a good beat 50 cops, but instead they just, they went and pointed at each other because they, they didn't want to quite go there. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know? man. But yeah. it escalated. There was loads of fights. School, that's how it all began, really. That's how I got into it. I used to love the martial arts. And I remember even before one fight, I'd be there doing my stretching and everything and doing the moves to warm up. And they're like, come on, just hurry up and fight. But um, that's how it all began, really, back in the day. Uh, I, I had seen you posted something about, you know, the military. So I wanted to ask, man, how was your time, you know, in the service over there in the UK? Yeah, it was very good. I mean, that's where I started to join in the in the boxing because obviously they had boxing team, the army of big in boxing. For most of my career, really, it was about two years of my career. I was just boxing and that was it traveling around, we went to Cyprus, back to UK. So I was based out in Germany and we would travel around in boxing. And yeah, the army was a very good experience for me. I achieved Lance Corporal. And then, um, but in the end it wasn't for me. I just left in the end and uh, wanted to make a better life in the civvy street. But that's so, when I started boxing. So looking back on your time served, you know, is there anything that you regret? And, you know, what, advice would you give to someone if they wanted to join now well so yeah when i was in the army right um after a while i didn't enjoy it because i went into what was called um bis like i was in a rifle company to begin with and then in the end i just didn't like it it, it wasn't for me I, I achieved my rank and then i they sort of they quite push you to what they want you to do it's not a place of freedom you know, and for me, I'm a very free-spirited character. And it just wasn't for me. That's why, why I left, really. I, I didn't like it. But if someone I'd, I'd recommend, I definitely would say it was a great experience. And for anyone considering going, if you feel a bit lost and you feel a bit like you're as a man or woman and you don't, you, you, you've you got some energy and adventure in you. Yeah. And, you know, the army is a place to go. It's only four years of your life. I did five years. But it's four years of your life and you're going to make friends for life. You're going to travel the world. Yeah. And you're going to, but okay, you're going to have some horrible, torturous experiences. Sure, but that's what's going to build your character because when you come and leave from there, you're going to be able to face anything, really. A after you left the military, take me on, like, your fighting journey. Like, what was, like, the first fight you took after you had got out of the uh, military? So the first fight, I went to box on what was called Queens Queensbury Boxing League, and that was an unlicensed boxing league. Yeah. Um, so you don't need a professional license, but it's professional rules, um, except they fight two-minute rounds rather than three-minute rounds. So the fight's often quite more fast-paced, and you don't do as long of a round, but you won't fight a 12-round fight. The maximum you usually will fight is sort of about mm. six rounds or so. Um but it's the it's, it's same professional rules. Uh, and yeah, um, I fought on Queensbury. I believe I won that fight. It's quite a boring fight because I just wanted to win. I was just sort of jabbing him. Um, after that, I fought a few more times. And uh, yeah, I just was um, doing the the um, the unlicensed glove boxing, really, until I, uh, unfortunately, I did go in some trouble with the law. And I went and spent a uh, small time in prison for um, a BB gun um, mm -hmm. because, yeah, so I did a year in jail for that. I was drunk and I stuck up a cab driver. Uh, when he, I did a runner from a cab, he chased me to my house and I, you know, did a John Wayne and I pulled the, the BB gun on him and I ended up doing a prison. Um, that was quite, quite a crazy experience. But then when I come out, you know, I really tried to get my life back on track and get, I got back into the bare knuckle, uh, not into the bare knuckle, into the unlicensed um, 
boxing scene straight away, you know. You know, you don't make a lot of money on it, but it's a little bit, just a little extra here and there, you know. You're working and you can fight every, you know, every month or so, just make a bit of extra cash, you know. The, the prison, I had no idea about that. That's pretty interesting. You know, we've been talking for a little while. I'm surprised. Um, is there anything that you can share from that experience? Um, yeah, so I mean, it was quite, um, I guess, to be honest, I quite enjoyed prison. I mean, I enjoyed it, but I made the most of it because I wanted to be about positive. I began writing a book. I've actually got it here, actually. Wow, um, okay. A book, it's called Enter the Jamazon, the search wow. for the Tunisian bullcrap monkey. So this book I began <laughs> writing. It's a fantasy novel about a king. He's very eccentric and he has this sort of zoo with full of, a mythical creature where he holds gladiatorial tournaments and the such. And he finds about this monkey that can ship gold, apparently far away in this land called Tunisia, spelt with a Z. He sends this guy, Christopher Clive, who's a son of Columbo Clive, who is a top uh, voyager who was uh, died, but he was a fan of Columbo. So he just believes his son will be the one to send on this crazy mission. And anyway, King Zarius sends Christopher Clive on this quest to the monkey. So and, you uh, orchestrated this all yourself. This is something that you created in your own mind and put this in this book that you're going to be coming out with. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Um, it's that's pretty cool, problem. man. That's, so that's, that's pretty cool. Thing. I used prison to make most of my time. I remember, um, you know, there were some nice times in there. Um, you know, there was a lot of fights in there. I remember one guy was sort of stabbed up. I got stabbed in the foot in one fight in the shower. The guy was getting stabbed and we were fighting him and it was just crazy and there was a lot of sort of knives and things. In Wait, there. you got stabbed? Yeah, in, only in the foot because I was fighting him in the shower and he had the blade and I sort of wrestled him and he managed to cut me just a bit on the foot, but not really bad. It was only a small little tiny wow, little blade. that's crazy, man. That's, that's, that's fucking nuts. Yeah, I mean, it's not a nice place, but, but like I say, it made the most of it. It's not like once I got to the good behavior wing, it was like literally like butlins in there. You know, we could, could walk out of the wing all day. You you know, I do training running up and down the stairs. Um, we train outside. Like, I, I learned how to do muscle ups in prison. Okay, you know? okay. So, prison, had, I look on the bright side what things it was good for me. I learned how to do muscle ups and I began writing my book which I probably never would have started writing had I not went in there and, you know, been on semen retention for so long that it gave me the creativity. I totally understand. Um, all right, man. So I wanted to ask, I'm sure you've taken some gloved fights before. I'm sure you had some fights with the gloves on. I wanted you to break down to the viewers, like what's the difference between fighting with gloves on and like bare knuckle? Well, with the gloves on, you can sort of take a lot more. Def you can defend yourself a lot better. Whereas with the without the gloves, it relies a lot more on the head movement. That's why you want to you want to keep away. You don't really want to be coming in. I mean, you, you can if you're one of these Tyler Good John characters, you can come in the inside and have a scrap because he can sort of take you know Im immeasurable amounts of damage on his face. However, a normal person like such as myself you know you're taking as a lot of damage it's going to cause you serious damage and you might end up going over so you don't really want to be hit a lot really you want to try okay not okay it's all about hit and don't be hit so the boxer the boxing style of jab and move stick and move that is much better for a bare knuckle than the um you know brawler style coming in okay yeah you do get some of the tough guys who just come in and brawl, but I personally don't think that's the sensible way to fight in a knuckle fight, really. And obviously, yeah, the hands, uh, you, there's, uh, you can hurt the hands more. Um, it's, to be honest, not, yeah, it is a lot different. Um, you can use some different techniques and things. Um, and yeah, it's, yeah, it's, uh, it's quite a lot more painful than normal boxing, that's for sure. A lot more painful. You know, out of all the combat sports, like, why did you choose bare knuckle? Well, uh, it was actually by chance, actually. See, during the COVID, um, there was nothing going on. There were no fights. I was like, I want to keep active. I was due to turn professional and get my professional glove license with the British Border Control. But that sort of went out the window because the waiting list was gotten so long and long. I couldn't 
you know, it was just, I just wanted to keep active. So I heard about this thing up in Manchester where they're fighting the haystacks, you know, the hay bale fight. Yeah, that's what um, I've seen, yep. You keep active, it's just about keeping active. So I went up there, did a couple, I did a couple of fights. The first one I actually had COVID because it it kept getting shut down. I chose this shut down and then moved and I'd been promoting this saying I'm going to do it for so, so many months that when I had the COVID, I couldn't, I didn't know I had COVID. But I felt really ill before I went up there. But I was like, I can't back out now. And so I went up there really ill. I felt a little bit better the sort of the day. I went up there, I stayed at my friend's house. I was coughing all night, didn't sleep. Turned up to the fight. The guy, his name Curtis Nelson, really tough little sort of guy. Sort of like a bull, you know. He wasn't the greatest technical, but he was just swarmed me. And he was really strong. I was really unwell and he just beat me. And I felt so disgraced. You know, in that fight, like, I didn't even get my hair done. You can see I wasn't in shape. I hadn't got my hair done, nothing. I felt so disgraced in that fight that I had to go back there for redemption. And yeah, when I went back there, I won. And and then that once you win in a bare knuckle fight, the pride, the, the feeling of that is so much more that, you know, so it's traditional boxing, you know, man to man. You do it like how you do it at the schoolyard. You, know, you get the respect, you feel... I don't know what it is about it, but when you win in the knuckle fight, it, it's a lot. It's a good feeling. I think um, any fighter will know how it feels when you win any fight, really. It feels good, but especially in the knuckle fight. And I just go and addicted to it. Not addicted to it, but just thrill, the adrenaline. You know, I love adrenaline. You yeah. Know, that's why, um, you know, uh, yeah, I just, I just love the adrenaline. You know, it's something I, I enjoy. Uh, that's why I joined the army. That's why, you know, I had been involved in some dodgy violent crimes in the past because I enjoy the adrenaline sort of yes. thing, doing that sort of stuff. But it's not, you know, but yeah, to channel that into something that's totally legal and totally, uh, you're not killing anyone or you're not, um, your life's not really at risk. Well, I guess it's at risk slightly, but it's, you're entertaining, you know, you're doing something positive with, a uh, with that adrenaline, you know, because you know, you're rather than adrenaline, something have a sex addiction or yeah, adrenaline of um doing armed robberies or adrenaline of um doing some crazy dangerous stunts, jumping, base jumping off of off of a building is you know, whereas uh, boxing, yeah, and it's keeping you fit, keeping in your great shape, uh, especially the knuckle man. You have to train so hard for that because it's so much harder than a regular boxing believe me it really, really really is so you know with the new year upon us man with 2023 you know is there any you know fight news fight news you can share with us and uh give me the landscape of uh 2023 yeah so um we're looking really good we started training really hard and the next fight we've got is on a sunday the 26th of march um, I don't know what that'll be for uh, in America, but 26th of March on mm. the BKB promotion. That is my next fight. And I'll be fighting George Hilliard, an extremely experienced boxer. Hilliard! Player. Yeah. Hilliard! That comes from uh, the Troy. I don't know if you've seen the film Troy, um, when Achilles he calls out Hector. You know, he's that sort of masculinity. That's what I'm trying to embody, trying to project, you know, onto Hilliard, you know, to intimidate him, to really let him understand he's up against an ancient Greek, you know, in the Athenian. So um, he's a great boxer, though, very great fighter. Um, I've seen him, I've seen him fight Knuckle before. I've watched some of his glove fights. He is experienced, probably he has more experience than me, but I believe not in the Knuckle fighting, although I don't know if he's had Knuckle fights outside However, I'm experienced. I'm extremely experienced in um, combat fighting, and I've had five knuckle fights um, competitively. So I feel like I've got the edge, perhaps mentally, when I'm in there with him, and he realizes that I'm not just going to be the walkover like he's expecting me to be because he looks bigger than me now. Because I'm a bit of a jokey character, people often take that for weakness, you know, to their own um, demise. And yeah, it will be. Um, it's going to be a great fight though, because he is a great, great fighter, and but so am I. So, you know, when I put put in the work, believe me, I'm I will be unstoppable. 
good no- send us off on a good note. Well, you know, I mean, a lot of us, we've all had hard times, you know, during the COVID, a lot of people struggled. They may have had mental health. They may have had problems or, you know, last year, even the beginning of this year, it's still the winter. You know, the new year technically hasn't started yet. New year technically starts in spring, really. So just remember whatever you're going through, you can't make it. Myself, Jesus saved me. I went through many things and I struggled with, battled with addiction problems that, you know, nearly destroyed me. I, I nearly died alone in my house. I had an OD and nearly died. Um, but luckily I prayed. I came back um, from 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 the brink of death and I got myself back in shape. I praised to Jesus. But, you know, find whatever works for you. I, I, I go to church. I'm born again Christian. Um, but just find whatever works for you. Be around with positive people and really believe in yourself. Just know that you were put on this earth to fulfill your destiny whatever that may be you know you are a time traveler and you are traveling through time at this very moment um you are going through time and time is what you will make it so don't worry everything will be okay and believe me yeah 2023 is gonna be a great year for everyone jack dude that was a that was powerful man that was powerful i appreciate it man it was it was wonderful talking with you brother yeah, and I uh, remember to check out my uh, uh sponsor, Spoxio. It's a free app for athletes. It's like the Instagram of the athlete world. Download it now. Sounds good. Appreciate it, brother. Yeah. Thank you.